So we're going to start with our other greens using the ultramarine blue in the cadmium light, yellow. And we get a very nice bee green with that. And you'll see this one is a little bit more on the olive side than this one is. I'm not sure if you can see that in your screen, but it is. Uh, and the reason is this has, um, this is the warm blue and it has a slight, little, little tiny bit of red in there. Can't see it that much, but it's there. And it, that's why this color using the cool um, blues and the cool yellows make a cooler green, a pretty Kelly green. And anytime you use a warm yellow or a warm blue, you're gonna get more of an olive tone. So if we take our warm blue and put it into the warm yellow, we get a green. Oh, that's very dark. So we can add a little bit more of this yellow to it and we'll get a lighter green, but it's still very olivey. And that's, once again, it's because those two colors are closer to their complementary colors. Thus, we have a beautiful olive greens, which are wonderful for our landscapes. So I'm going to save those greens and put them off to the side, and we'll use them later. So now we can make our purples. But I wanted to tell you, when I first learned how to paint, my painting teacher played a trick on me, and she wouldn't let me use, she only let me use this cadmium red. Um, and it turns out that uh, I had a really hard time making purple, uh, and you'll see why. So let's try to make a purple. I'll put my two piles of uh, red out. That's the Ellerism Crimson, and this is the Cadmium Red. And uh, I'm going to show you what happens when I add a little bit of Prussian Blue, don't need much, to my Cadmium Red. I'm going to start with this first, because this is why I had such a trouble making purple. Oops. I guess I need a little bit more. So when I first tried to make purple using this red, I kept trying to add more blue to it because it just wasn't looking purple to me and I kept getting this color. And uh, hopefully you can tell that's not a very pretty purple. In fact, it's more of a brown. And no matter how much blue I can add to that, I still am not getting uh, any kind of purple out of that. So let's see if this, this blue will work with that red. This is the ultramarine blue with the cadmium red. Oh, I added a lot. And let's add some more red. Maybe that'll help. Ah, uh, what's happening? I'm still getting brown. Not a very, it's a little, it's, it's very, dull and, and, and not at all like purple. Like I want a very pretty purple and that's not happening. So that's the problem is that my first teacher gave me only the cadmium red and not the, the alizarin crimson. So what happens when I do the blue in the alizarin crimson? Ah, that's getting better. It's a little bit more purple. This is the Prussian blue, which is a cool blue. So it's still not the prettiest purple in the world. Let's see what happens with the ultramarine blue. Oh, now we're getting closer to what I think is purple. Maybe a little more blue. Very dark purple, but it's a much prettier purple than any purple that you're gonna get from the cadmium red. So just remember when you wanna do purple, use the alizarin crimson. Now, I, you might have noticed I had a, some, some dioxin purple over here, and if you, the reason is sometimes I need a very vivid purple, and the dioxin is a much prettier purple, much more brilliant, and so I let my students buy a tube of the dioxin purple for those special occasions when they want to do morning glories or anything else that has um, a little bit more brilliance to it. All right, I'm gonna clean this up a little and put our purples aside for now. And I wanted to talk and show you 
how to use the complementary colors on purpose. Now, you can accidentally make lots of browns, but on purpose, if we take our orange and a blue, which is the opposite, we get a lovely brown. How about we take some yellow and our dioxin purple, which are opposite colors, and we get a lovely gold, which is on the brown side. If you notice, it's very similar to this uh, yellow ochre over here. So that's why I have the yellow ochre, because I tend to mix it a lot. I tend to use it a lot. So I always say if you tend to mix a lot of color, that you can uh, go ahead and buy a tube of it. So that's why I have the yellow ochre there. And then our next opposite color is red and green. So let's take some, some of our Kelly green and add a little bit of red to it. And we get a beautiful brownish color again. So uh, there's another way of using complementary colors, and that is instead of mixing them together to make browns, you put them side by side and you'll create a visual uh, interest. Um, and so when we are doing our painting, we want to draw our eyes to certain areas. You want to make that area the most interesting, and when you put complementary colors next to each other, a yellow next to a purple, or a blue next to an orange, or a red next to a green, you get uh, a really interesting combination and the, your, the human eye is naturally drawn right to those spots. So you want to make sure that you put those um, combinations, those high contrast of color and high contrast of value next to each other wherever you want them to look the, the most. So for instance, with our complementaries together side by side, you can see that it creates a real high interest. So here's the red and green, here's the yellow and the purple together. Really nice, I love that combination. And then there's the blue and the orange, that's right. And so side by side, they're very powerful, especially the, the, the purple and the yellow because they're light and dark together. And uh, so that's a really nice visual interest. So if you don't have your color wheel with you and you can't remember a, what a complementary color, what the opposite color is, just think cool and warm. When you mix cool and warm colors together, you'll get a brown. If you put cool and warm colors side by side, you'll get a visual interest because of the contrast of cool and warm. So now I want to show you how to make black. Now there are lots of ways of making black, but I'm going to show you some of my favorites. So you start out with dark colors together. So remember when we made our dark purples using the, the blues and the alizarin crimson, we made a very, very dark purple but it's still not black. It is a little too intense for being black. So the magic to turn that dark purple into black is over here, this little um, thing called the yellow ochre that uh, was my extra tube that's kind of out in the middle of nowhere over there. So if you add, what it is is a complementary color again. It's a, a yellow, but it's, I don't want to add a light yellow because that'll lighten up my color. I want a dark color. Also, you got to be careful not to add too much. So I'm going to add a little at a time. And you add a little bit more. And sure enough, our purple is no longer as purpley. It's much more dark, much more black. And I don't believe you need anything blacker than that. Now, there's lots of other ways. If you need it to be more brown, you can add more reds to it more yellows to it to make a very dark brown, warm color, just add more warm colors to it. 
and you can make a dark brown. So now you know how to make all the colors of the rainbow. Let's get painting.